Hello guys, welcome again to another episode of Pinoy in Australia. Today we have this Toyota uh, Aurion. So the problem of this uh, vehicle is charging issue. This is 2008 year model. So as you can see, the bar battery uh, symbol is light on. So let's go and measure the charging capacity guys. Okay, so right now the multi-tester is connected to the output of the alternator so the charging capacity is 12 volts it dropped it to 11.99 definitely the alternator is not charging so if we are going to measure on the battery battery side so test this on the ground of the battery so the charging capacity is 12.02 so, if I'm going to turn on all the part, uh, all the accessories of this vehicle, this uh, uh, bolts will drop to maybe 11 bolts. So, let's turn on all the accessories. Alright guys, the accessories are all, are all on. Headlight uh, is on high beam. Hazard is on, air conditioning, air conditioning is on. Right now, the charging rate is 11 point, uh, somewhere 57, 56. So, definitely we have a charging issue, guys. So, if you're going to transfer this uh, lead of the multi to the output of the alternator, output is 11.4 guys 11.48 so definitely our alternator is not charging so I already checked the wiring guys the uh, indicator ok guys um, the new alternator is already mounted so I'm already uh, put some of the parts and let me show you how I did it so what I did to replace the alternators is I removed the cover here on the top. So there is a cover here, some plastic. So this cover, guys, you need to remove all the clips here. One here, one here, one here, one here, that's here, and another one here. So once you remove the clip, uh, the front portion of the uh, vehicle will be exposed so next thing you do is uh, you remove this this is the locking mechanism of the hats or the bonnet you need to remove this one this one this one then remo remove all the clips using long nose you press this uh, lock remove this thing so this is the sensor for the uh, anti tape remove all the, the, the clip over there and there's another one there remove the clip over there so you need to remove all the harness that attach on that uh, 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 this pole this pole you need to remove all the thing attached on that pole then you have to remove this clip too so once you remove all the bolt and uh, clips you can remove this one so once you remove this one this one that one that one you can put this aside place it here then remove also this bolt once you remove this bolt and the bolt on the bottom one here uh, that one once you remove that bolt in there you can remove this uh, bar then next thing you do is remove the socket attached on the horn this horn, this two horn, then remove those four screws that holding this uh, panel. This one, this one, another one here, and another one there. So once you remove this thing, you can remove this panel, this entire panel there. Then the re the radiator will be exposed. So the upper part of the radiator is held by this grommet. So the, that's the one that holding the upper portion of the radiator, and this one. So once you remove this one, uh, 
what you do is you disconnect all the harness that attach on the uh, radiator fan so see this wiring you remove this one so once you remove this one uh, remove the screw of the AC condenser so there's a screw here then uh, that's 10 millimeter spanner you need to use to remove that one another one in there and another one there and another one there so once you remove those four screw the set the condenser can be separated from the radiator and once you remove those uh, screw that holding the condenser from the con from the radiator you need to remove this radiator hose remove the clamp and also uh, there's a clamp there in the bottom there's a clamp at uh, a radiator hose here this clamp here you need to re remove this clamp then you can disconnect the radiator he hose here and the hose goes on the bottom side of the radiator then remove that uh, um, radiator hose from the bottom of the radiator then you can pull now uh, this uh, um, uh, this uh, radiator pan assembly so to remove this radiator pan assembly you need to press this clip this one here once you press this one you you can pull the uh, housing of the pan that towards that way so there one and two clips there so once you remove those two clips push that way then lift the radiator uh, radiator pan then after that you can pull the um, uh, the radiator once you remove the radiator you have enough space to access this um, um, alternator so once you have access here there's a pulley under here there's an idler pulley you need to remove that idler pulley uh, located under this pipe then before you do remove the idler pulley remove the radiator uh, no the alternator pan belt first remove the alternator pan belt uh, use um, special tools to pull the uh, automatic tensioner so once you push push the auto automatic uh, uh, pull the automatic tensioner so the automatic tensioner is see that alternator guys uh, that pulley guys not alternator that pulley that pulley here uh, my finger can just, uh, see that my finger there that, uh, that's the automatic tensioner you need to put special tools uh, to pull the um, alternator uh, tensioner and uh, al the alternator belt uh, automatic tensioner so pull the the belts uh, uh, after removing the belts um, you can start removing the bolt from here but after removing the bolt here um, you need to uh, remove the the idler pulley under this uh, pipe there's an idler pulley here so you can have access uh, with the lower uh, bracket bolt of the alternator so there's another bolt like this at the bottom of that alternator so you need to remove the idler pulley so once you remove the idler pulley you need to remove the 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 bolt that holding the uh, ac compressor so there are four bolts that holding the ac compressor on this vehicle guys i remove one of the alternate uh, the idler pulley here guys located here because the bearing uh, is already worn out it's making a loud, loud noise so uh, it's already broken so in order for you to have an access there you need to remove there's a cover here guys in this portion there's a plastic cover like this you need to remove those uh, bolt here 
and another one here and need to all everything that securing this panel so you can remove this uh, cover the cover here so you can have access with the belt so it's much easier to remove the uh, alternator belt uh, removing with the uh, uh, unmounted uh, right hand front wheel so if you remove the right hand front wheel you have a good access to the alternator belt so uh, I have another project on this one guys because the CB joint uh, boot is already cracked as you can see all the grease is uh, thrown away from from the boot so the boot is no longer holding the grease so the grease is scattered all over the the place so as you can see those are the grease those are, you can see those are different color uh, uh, liquid thing those are grease from the CB, CB joint so that will be another project guys so uh, I will might I might uh, I might do another video for that uh, uh, CB joint boot, boot replacement guys so we are waiting for the parts on that uh, CB joint boot so once I put back everything guys I'm going to show you the difference of the charging uh, uh, capacity of the alternator once we put the new one okay guys um, this is the a charging rate of the new alternator guys it's 14.0304 so uh, definitely the problem is the alternator guys so before is 12 volts and it goes down uh, as we open all the accessories and at the same time I replace the engine oil of this vehicle guys uh, because it's also due for uh, periodic maintenance and uh, my next project on this vehicle is to um, replace the CB joint uh, boot and also I'm going to replace the bug cover gasket uh, the rack and cover gasket because, uh, this rack and uh, cover gasket is leaking guys I just spray it with brick cleaner that's why a little bit clean but before it is spray it with brick cleaner uh, that part portion that I'm showing you right now is wet of engine oil so the bug cover uh, gas tank clean so our brand new alternator is uh, performing, performing well and this this alternator is not a genuine one this is just an aftermarket uh, alternator so uh, right now it's uh, performing well guys so I'm going to turn on all the accessories and let's see let's see how, how much is the charging capacity while all the accessories are on hi right, guys uh, all the accessories are on right now it's 13 point uh, 47 48 13.48 uh, maximum uh, charging rate so as you can see the headlight is in high beam the indicator light uh, the hazard is on air condition is also on uh, right now our charging issue is uh, fixed Okay guys, uh, as you can see the temperature of the transmission all right now is on 105 degrees. So according to the spec, the temperature of the transmission oil uh, must be in between 105 degrees centigrade, ah no, 104 degrees centigrade to 113 degrees centigrade. So right now we are within spec. So this is the perfect time right now to check the oil level of the transmission oil so I'm going to restart it again then check the oil level so right now is 102 degrees so let's wait for a while till the temperature goes to 104 so it's 104 then let's go to the uh, bottom of the vehicle Uh, 
Okay guys, there's an oil coming out from the uh, transmission, but I think the person who do the service of this vehicle had overfilled the transmission oil. But right now I'm not going to tamper the amount of oil inside. Uh, I'm just gonna leave it like that. It's better to be overfilled than underfilled, because if you underfill the uh, transmission oil it will cause heaps of problem guys like burning of the clutches inside the automatic transmission uh, there is one thing more that I'm going to show you guys that's very important you know you need to check the level of the uh, vehicle whether the vehicle is in uh, flat level so how did I do the checking of the level of the vehicle okay guys this is how I check the level of the uh, vehicle what I did is I put a magnetic uh, uh, labeling gauge guys so as you can see it's almost zero guys so I have also a digital one here guys so it's uh, point fifty seven degrees. So the vehicle is a little bit leaning down. Uh, point fifty eight degrees. So that's almost zero. So if I I need to raise the front side of the vehicle, guys. Because uh, right, this is the front side of the vehicle, guys. That's the front side. Yep, that's the front side of the vehicle. That's the front side. Uh, that is the degrees of the uh, in, of the vehicle so 0.57 uh, degrees uh, to be exact using the digital uh, uh, labeling gauge okay guys uh, I just want to remind you guys that every time you're working on vehicle and you leave the vehicle and if the ground is not level, like my parking yard, guys, my driveway, the driver is not level, don't forget to use a wheel chuck. And also, don't forget to use a stand. Don't rely on the alligator jack, guys. But sometimes, see this one? Sometimes they fail, and if they fail, and if you're under the vehicle, the consequences guys very fatal so always observe safety guys when doing this kind of job when on you're, you're working on an unlevel ground unlevel ground and make sure that you have a leveling uh, tools so it's very important that you have a leveling tools because if your vehicle is not level you are going to uh, miss uh, uh, miss uh check the level of the oil of the transmission even the uh, level of the oil of the engine if you're doing a, a, a oil level check both transmission and engine guys so while the vehicle is also lit up with the uh, uh, right level guys i also check the engine oil level at the same time at the same time because i did the change oil on this vehicle guys Okay guys, uh, let's let's put an ending on this uh, video guys. So as you can see guys, I checked the oil level of the transmission. And the reason is because I pull out the radiator and the oil uh, cooler of the transmission is located uh, inside the radiator. And during the procedure of removal of the uh, radiator, I lost some of the oil of the transmission. So... As you can see, I show you the procedure how to check the oil uh, level of the transmission. So it requires uh, scan tools to check the temperature of the transmission oil, and it also requires uh, labeling uh, gauge if your garage is not level or if your driveway uh, driveway is not level. So make sure that the vehicle is on the level. Very important, guys. Vehicle is on the level. And if you lift the lift the vehicle, make sure you put the stand, and you also put um, 
uh, chucking or you block the wheels of the vehicle because uh, it's uh, not nice guys if you don't use safety guys make sure that you work you work safely guys because uh, it's not uh, good if the trans uh, the uh, transmission jack or the uh, alligator jack fail and you didn't put uh, uh, any support guys or just like the the jack stand uh, if the transmission uh, jack or the transmission uh, the alligator jack fail the result will be uh, fatal guys it will uh, squash you and it's not nice if you lose our life during the work guys make sure you work uh, simply guys so uh, as, as you can show as you can see guys i show you the procedure how to check the oil level so need scan tools need leveling tools and need the, ta the target uh, temperatures to be reached before you check the oil level okay guys uh, if you like this video guys please uh, press that like button if, and if you haven't uh, been uh, subscribed to our channel please press that uh, uh, subscribe button please press that uh, notification bell so you will be notified every time i do a video guys okay guys see you on the next video uh, goodbye paalam ciao